Cyber Insiders. Untold stories from behind the cyber front line. Hi, and welcome to Cyber Insiders, the podcast that looks at what it's really like to work on the front line of cybersecurity. I'm Dominique Adams, your host and communications lead at Adharma, one of the UK's leading managed security service providers. Today, I'll be talking to Alison Frost, who's a threat intelligence specialist at Adharma. We're going to be discussing the rise of phishing as a service and its impact on the cybersecurity landscape. By the end of this episode, you will understand how phishing as a service operates, how it is impacting cyber criminals, how cyber criminals are using these tools to target organizations and which organizations they're targeting, and how phishing as a service is impacting the overall shape of the cyber threat landscape. Without further ado, welcome to the podcast, Alison. Hi, Dom. How are you? Not too bad. So I think we should just dive right into this um, because it really is like a growing problem. We've seen like a massive spike in like phishing attacks. For anyone out there who doesn't understand, could you please just give us like a brief overview of what phishing as a service is and how it works? Yeah, absolutely. So phishing as a service platforms are accessible generally through uh, Telegram, dark web forums and marketplaces. And they offer a variety of different services to even the most inexperienced cyber criminals. Um, so they give a variety of different services and um, tooling uh, to assist them in staging phishing attacks. So these phishing attacks could be against companies, um, but also individuals personally. So just to sort of break down those services in terms of what they provide, the biggest one being those phishing kits. That's what the majority of cyber criminals are after. So. So the phishing kits, they can be uh, a, a variety of different templates. Um, so those templates can be, for example, password reset pages, uh, credit card forms, or 2FA code entry prompts. So, and then they'll give those handy step-by-step -step guides. That sort of leads me on to my next point, which is the customer service element that they give. So like SaaS-based applications, they provide a lovely customer service. So if individuals are having any issues in terms of staging their phishing activity, they can reach out to support and they'll provide some valuable information as to how to, how to get past those sticking points that they may have. Um, the next sort of things that they do provide, so each platform is very different, um, but a number of them do have dashboards. So they present information regarding the individual's campaign activity and how they're progressing. So in sort of quite a user-friendly sort of way, uh, they can also provide infrastructure so they can host phishing pages, but individuals can also download phishing templates um, and host them themselves. And the last thing that these uh, platforms can do is provide storage to individuals. So once they've stolen credentials, they, um, they can store them on the platforms, which they can utilize later for the fraudulent activity. Um, and also those platform creators will have a bit of a cut generally of those credentials, um, which they can share with third parties as well. I should mention earlier, um, they do come generally with a subscription fee as well. Um, but there are a, a large number of users, which I know you've alluded to earlier. So basically it's like Netflix, um, Netflix for cyber criminals, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, is it the accessibility? Is it the cost? Like, I, I think I read somewhere that you can get, um, you can get a, a phishing as a service toolkit for as little as like $200 and that's for two weeks, 350 for like a month long service. So, I mean, what, in your opinion, has been the cause of such a significant rise in phishing as a service activity? So, so I suppose when we look at it in terms of um, cyber as a service, it has rapidly increased. And this is one of those um, areas that's sort of taking advantage of that as well. We've seen that it's expanding rapidly within the ransomware space um, and regularly adopted by a number of groups. Um, but phishing pages as, as sort of a service generally have been around for a number of years, but over the last few years, especially the last couple, I would say, they've really wrapped up and they're taking advantage of that ability to offer these great services, which makes cyber criminals um, lives a lot easier. So it, it's a really, really appealing to cyber criminals because it, it takes a lot of the legwork out of it. Um, and that's why we're seeing so many people coming to these platforms because um, they can stage them so much quicker than they would have previously. Yeah. So in terms of like, 
problematic tools, groups, like who should we know about? Who are the like movers and shakers? Who are the ones really causing ripples and waves in the cybercrime landscape? So there are a variety. Um, some have been around for a long time. Some of them are quite new and upcoming. Um, we've seen some big disruptions uh, last year and also early part of this year. So um, that, that has had a bit of an impact as well, um, but we are seeing more coming through the ranks as well. So, so just in terms of some of those longer standing members, um, you've got, say, for example, DADSEC um, and Onyx, uh, which is a rebrand of Caffeine. Um, those groups have been extremely active around sort of 2022 to 2023. And when we look at the sort of more upcoming platforms, you've got, for example, Dracula is a big one that sort of stands out to me which sort of came onto the scene around March of last year. Um, they initially uh, offered smishing type um, kits. So the main focus was his, um, helping cyber criminals to conduct those phishing attacks, which were mainly sort of focused at Android and, and iPhone users. But due to the regulations that came in last year, uh, for example, um, uh, iPhone, uh, sorry, Apple, um, restricting users from sending a vast amount of email, uh, sorry, text messages in one go, um, that has impacted them. So they've tried to look at you know, more ways to actually take advantage of the market. So um, a new one that they've released early this year within February was um, Dracula uh, version three, which is now referred to as Dracula Suite. And with this, they've brought out a number of different phishing kits, which can target a variety of different uh, brands. They've also incorporated some new features, for example, anti-detection features, um, dashboards being the new one that they've created. And also uh, one that's quite concerning for the fraudulent aspect is the fact that they can create credit card images of cards, which cyber criminals can then put into their digital wallets, which they can have in their back pocket to then utilize for the fraudulent activity in the future, which is quite concerning. Um, just looking at sort of platforms overall as well, just looking at those other groups. So 2FA bypass is a key feature that a number of the platforms offer. And over the last year and a half, activity regarding adversary in the middle phishing kits has really ramped up, uh, which is a, it's a concern, especially for companies that adopt um, MFA because they still can be uh, vulnerable to attack. And looking at some of those platforms that do offer adversary in the middle um, kits, include Rockstar 2FA, which is an associated group of DadSec, and Phoenix, which I mentioned earlier. You've also got Tycoon 2FA, which have been extremely active during 2023. And then more recent ones is Sneaky 2FA and um, Ashra. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, we should all be worried, but say you were a CISO, you're a cyber... Um, you're a cybersecurity professional, you're in charge of protecting your company. Like, why should you be worried about this? Like, doesn't phishing training and, you know, all the spam emails, like, do, do we not have protections in place? But like, or is this something we really should be like sitting up and being more aware of? Yeah, I do. I do think, yeah, it's it's useful having those, um, the phishing awareness uh, training. But I do think what, what companies need to do is to keep looking out for those new trends and, and updating that, uh, those phishing awareness uh, campaigns yeah i mean what's um law enforcement up to i think i saw that between april 14 and uh, april 17th like in 2024 um law enforcement agencies like across 19 countries uh were coordinated by europol to like dismantle like big um platforms i think it was like um lab host yeah so that that was a biggie because that impacted lab host which one of the largest platforms operating um so as you've mentioned, a number of individuals from various countries were targeted. And since then, um, we have had more recently um, a number of dark, dark web marketplaces taken down um, in January of this year. So we saw um, international law enforcement action against um, a number of those platforms. And since the, since the takedown of those platforms, investigators have looked into those and just to see how many users are actually utilizing them. Um, two of those in particular being Nulled and Cracked, uh, the Cracked Forum, there is over 10 million users, which is unbe unbelievable in terms of how many users are utilizing just two platforms alone. So, you know, when you when you think of that and then the other platforms that are available, it just, yeah, it's, yeah, you just think how many numbers there are. 
Yeah, and the one thing I always, it's always great to hear that law enforcement are doing a lot, but would you remember when they took down Lockbit, it then spawned lots of other adversaries? Do you think there's a risk of that happening? Like, even if they take one, they're just going to sprout like weeds elsewhere? What's your take on that? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I mean, yeah, when Lockbit was taken out, a number of um, ransomware groups came to the forefront. Uh, one in particular would be definitely Ransom Hub and how they really ramped up activity and they're really seen as a a ransomware as a service powerhouse now. And I think it is the same for um, phishing as a service. Um, it might have raised concerns initially when the, rans uh, when the enforcement action happened, but I do think it was also seen as a great opportunity to fill the void and start ramping up their numbers and their subscription fees and to be seen as platforms that are trustworthy and you know worthy to, to subscribe to. So I do think it would be definitely seen as an area that um, they they would want to expand. Um, also, I mean, when you look at um, activity since, for example, when lab hosts were taken out last year in April, there's been a number of groups, for example, Dracula, they have really ramped up in terms of their service offering, but there's also a, a number of other platforms that are regularly updating their phishing kits. Um, so to, to see more appealing and to generate more numbers from users. So is it almost like Amazon, Netflix and Apple TV all competing for more, mm -hmm. you know, more of the good capture of the audience? Yeah, I, I, th I think it is really, definitely. So what type of organisations, like what industries should be really concerned about phishing as a service? Okay, so, so just looking in terms of activity that has been utilising uh, phishing as a service uh, offerings, there's been a variety of different organisations targeted and a number of those sitting within critical national infrastructure. Just to list a few, you've got the finance uh, sector, governmental, you've got telecommunications, postal services, utilities, um, and also aviation, just to name a few. Um, but just, you know, just in terms of the organizations, I know I've not mentioned all of them there, but it's just sort of organizations really need to be sort of considering and being mindful um, to the ever expanding attack surface concerning, concerning phishing especially regarding delivery means. So it's not just your traditional emails now um, through links and attachments. You're also seeing QR codes, which was a thing that came into play back in 2023 and is still utilized today. You've also got delivery through Microsoft Teams, LinkedIn, and also through um, Android and uh, iPhone through smishing. Um, but it's very important that companies look to update their phishing awareness um, material just so that they're keeping as up to date as possible. So I think the most important part, we've kind of established it's a serious threat. We've established it's a growing threat. Um, but what are the practical steps that an organization can take to start mitig mitigating against these risks, um, especially seeing as they're becoming so much more sophisticated and easier to launch? So there are a number of things. But some of the ones that I'm sort of thinking of in terms of the information that I'm seeing, I think it's very important for companies to stay ahead of the current delivery trends. They re they're regularly changing. Um, and I think it would be important once you know those delivery trends is to update your detection rules accordingly to ensure you're identifying that malicious activity, whether it's via email or whether it's coming through on Microsoft Teams. Um, following on from that, and I know we've mentioned it earlier as well in terms of those phishing, that, those phishing um, awareness training um, sessions that you have in, in your companies, I think it's really important that you're regularly updating those to to sort of highlight um, to all of your employees from the top down in terms of how how emails might be presented, but also if they're coming in via other means like Teams, um, also the different lures that they're using. So um, one, oh, I'm just thinking of one in particular. So around around the time of either January or um, April, it's, it tends to be the time when companies are looking around pay rises. Um, so a lot of cyber criminals can take advantage of this and start sending emails regarding potential pay rises or, you know, things like that, which can, you know, people are expecting it around that sort of time so they can easily fall foul. So it's, it's trying to keep that as up to date as possible. Um, my next, my next one and a little bit of advice would be the imp implementation of MFA and strong password protocol. Now, this might already be something that you have within your companies. Um, but if it's not, I would definitely advise it just to remain more secure. Um, and lastly would be credential monitoring, um, phishing. They're hoovering up a, a variety of, and a, a, a vast amount of credentials. So I would say as a company, it would be worthwhile definitely monitoring the credentials 
so that they could be identified and dealt with accordingly just to prevent further activity from occurring. For example, data breaches, ransomware, so it's trying to keep yourself as safe as possible. So aside from thinking of the company and stuff, say even just as an individual, as an employee, what are the key signs that you're getting fished? Because I believe phishing has definitely significantly moved on from the time where it was, hi, I'm a prince from this country. Can you please send me money? They're obviously much more sophisticated. So for us as the end user on the computer, what should we look out for? So, um, I mean, you do you get to get the links to the attachments, but then thinking about things like the the layout of it. So it can incorporate uh, branded information, which you might think, oh, that looks legitimate. But actually, when you start looking into it a little bit more further, say, for example, you look into the sender's information, does it look legitimate? If it doesn't, don't engage with it. Also, a lot of uh, cyber criminals will put a matter of urgency on things. So please reply within a couple of days or a couple of hours, which makes the people think, especially if they're a little bit distracted with other activity, or oh, I must engage with this straight away and not really thinking about the consequences of that. So yeah, urgency is another thing that they can do. And I was just thinking um, for organizations, because it's, you know, say you spot it and it is something dodgy, it's probably recommendable that the organization have a way for people to escalate it. So, I mean, what what can companies do to make sure like employees know how to escalate it and that there's a team ready to take that on? Like, what would you recommend? Yeah, so in emails, you do have um, the vision report. So it would be really important to make your employees aware of this to uh, report it as phishing and even if they aren't phishing uh, emails i think it just shows to the company that people are really taking it on board um also you know having having those processes set in place so if you do have um contact via say for example microsoft teams the employees know who to contact within say your it departments to say I've, I've had somebody reach out to me here, or I've had somebody reach out to me on LinkedIn, for example, what shall I do? So I think it's really important, especially within that awareness training to really sort of hit home in terms of what those processes would be. Brilliant. Um, and I 100% agree. And I also, personally, I would love it if we started incentivizing it and had a leaderboard, who is the best employee for like evading phishing tactics. I think I, I think I'd be up there. I think I'd be up among the top. I haven't been caught so far by our phishing training program, which is really, really efficient. They're very sneaky with us. So I think you've covered all of our base points, which has been great. It's really informative, especially about the groups that are out there. So I would just like to say thank you for coming on board um, and thank you for talking to us. It's been great. Yeah, thank you ever so much for having me. So just to our listeners, just to say again, you know, if anything that was raised within this podcast is of interest to you or you'd like to learn more about it or you want to just strengthen your overall cyber resilience please reach out to adharma at hello at adharma.com and somebody will be more than willing to talk to you about that so until next time you all stay safe cyber insiders from adharma follow and rate on your podcast app together we've got this